Hey guys, this is um, cycle two, week nine, new grammar. Um, for the 15s, we're gonna play math hopscotch again. So I'm gonna um, give every kid one of those sheets that they can take home with them. Um, it will look like a giant 15 made up of all the numbers in the 15s. And we're gonna point um, as we go through, as we say each number in the 15s and sing the song that's on the CD and the app. Okay, for the pluperfect tense, I've been racking my brain how to remember that the plu perfect tense starts with the aram, eras, erat, aramus, eratus, erant. And the thing that keeps sticking out to me is the word era. That's in just about all of those words, okay? So it's era. And when I think of an era, I think of like an era like a long time ago. Like there was an era in my life where I was just, you know, people will say there was an era in my life where, you know, I made bad decisions or I was really just um, like naive about things or something like that. So people will make that comment. And the pluperfect tense is all about something that had happened. Okay, so like I had laughed so hard. I've never laughed so hard in my life. I had laughed so harder. I had been waiting in line or I had waited in line for hours by that point. Um, and so that to me is like an era, right? Because you had done something an, like a long time ago. So as we sing the song, we're gonna go like this, like, whew, long time ago, era. Okay, so we're gonna say, Aram, Eras, Erat, Teramus, Eratus, Erat, Aram, and then just do it like that. And that'll be how we remember the pluperfect tense. Um, what are some parts of the sun? So the core is where all the nuclear, uh, nuclear fusion reactions are occurring and it's in the center. So we're gonna go like this, like it's like churning and like lots of reactions, okay? So we're gonna say the core, the radiative zone is legitimately, when you think of that zone, think of radiation, it's radiating. And the radiation's coming out as photons, it's going straight out as heat and photons like this. So we're gonna say core, radiative zone. The convective zone, when you hear that word convection, I want you to think of like a convection oven. And the idea of a convection oven is you have circulating air, right? You have hot air and cold air that's being, um, Basically, when you have convection, it, you're, you have a liquid and the hot is rising and the cold part of the liquid is sinking and there's kind of a churning that happens and that's how heat is distributed, okay? So for the convection zone, we're gonna go like this. It's the convection zone, okay? So you've got the core, you've got the radiative zone, and then you've got the convection zone. And then you've got sunspots, okay? So we're gonna go like that for sunspots. And then the photosphere, that's just a word that is the surface of the sun that we can see, and it's called photosphere. So we're literally gonna go like a photo because it's what we can see, photosphere. And then for solar flares, um, there's bursts of um, you know solar wind and energy that come off the sun. And so we're gonna go solar flares like this, like these flares are coming off, solar flares. And then for Corona, it's like part of the atmosphere of the sun and it's like the light that you see coming off. Um, and so we're gonna say the Corona cause it's like the very outside brilliant edge. And even I think like there's a similar word that we use for the petals of a flower. It might even be called the Corona. It's a very similar word. And so the idea is you have just this ray of sunshine all around, okay? All right, English and um, interrogative pronouns. So for this, um, I want you to think of interrogation, which is to ask a lot of questions. Like when you're a detective and you're trying to solve a case, you're interrogating people. So I'm gonna have my little action figures. I'm gonna have like um, a magnifying glass and like a hat to make me look like a detective. And I'm gonna be interrogating my superheroes. And um, I'm gonna make up a story. Like let's say, um, there was a robbery at our local grocery store. Who did it? And so I'm gonna look at all the superheroes and I'm gonna say, who went to the grocery store last weekend? And whom went with you? Whose car did you take? Which store did you go to? And what did you buy there? I what? must see that receipt. What did you buy? So we're gonna say whom, who. or who, whom, whose, which, and what. Who went? Whom went with you? 
Whose car did you take? Which store did you go to? And what did you buy? And that's just gonna be like an example. Um, all right, timeline. So for Byzantine Emperor, we're gonna put our hands on our hips like we're the emperor. And it was it's Emperor Justinian. So um, for this one, because he had Justinian's code, we learned about it last year in, in like the more ancient part of history. It became a model for legal systems. So almost like a constitution, a written code um, for laws. And so um, we're gonna say Byzantine Emperor Justinian, because he had Justinian's code, okay? For Benedict and monasticism, um, monasticism was all about denying yourself um it was you know part of christianity so it was a person who really advocated for that so we're gonna go like this and make a real stern face because we're denying ourselves we're very stoical okay um muhammad founds islam so make an m muhammad founds islam a crescent in the stars the symbol of islam zanj and early ghana and africa we're just gonna make a z and a g Zanj and early Ghana and Africa. Franks, because French people have mustaches. Franks, defeat. Throw down your hand like you defeated. Defeat Muslims at the Battle of Tour. Sword fight. Battle of Tour. Okay, golden age of Islam. So it's the prosperous era of Islam, okay? So that's why we're going like this. Vikings, because we're Vikings have horns, right? Vikings, raid and trade. So you're basically grabbing something and taking it. Vikings, raid and trade. And obviously we're singing that to the song that is part of, you know, um, the classical conversations curriculum. Okay, tell me about some absolute monarchs. So we're gonna draw 15 and 18 for the 1500s and 1800s. Um, so we're going to say, between the 1500s and 1800s, Henry VIII of England, Louis XIV of France, and Philip II of Spain. This is like a bullfighter. Spain. Okay. And then we're gonna make Russia and Prussia with our hands. So Russia is like way up at the top and expanding out. So we're gonna say, um, Peter the Great. Peter the Great of Russia. And Frederick the Great of, and then Prussia. So Russia was here and Prussia was kind of like, kind of parallel, but a little bit farther south, but a like right next to Russia. So we're gonna say, Peter the Great of Russia. Frederick the Great of Prussia ruled during the age of, so ruled, ruled during the age of absolute monarchs. So you have a staff, absolute monarchs, and you can even make a crown if you want. Absolute monarchs. So that's what we're gonna do for those. Um, for the Caribbean, we are, I made up a song and I made this up all by myself. So if it's not the best, that would be why I didn't borrow this from anybody. So we're going to sing it to the tune of Kokomo, which is about the Caribbean anyways. So it kind of works. Um, so here's the Gulf of Mexico and here's the Caribbean right here. And so we're zooming in right here in this little box and we're going to say, Cuba, Jamaica, ooh, I want to take you to Haiti. Dominican Republic, Puerto Rico, baby, why don't we go to the Caribbean, just off the Gulf of Mexico, that's where you want to go to get away from it all and have a ball, Cuba, Jamaica, ooh, I want to take you to Haiti, Dominican Dominican Republic, Puerto Rico, ooh, baby, why don't we go to the Caribbean, just off the Gulf of Mexico, that's where you want to go to get away from it all and have a ball. And you can just repeat that as many times as you'd like. All right, guys, see you next week.